It gives me great pleasure to be part of these engagements today, taking into consideration that we're talking to the people who make it their responsibility that things change. Talking to the people that I always refer to as the real economic freedom fighters, the real ones, those that know the struggle of waking up, going to work or to some department to share an idea and innovation that they have and that door is slammed on their faces, but they never give up. The following day they come back, they try to reach out to others because they believe they have a story to tell and a solution to provide to South Africa, not just government. And thank you for the time I've known black business people of our country from for making sure that you're going to play your part. My sister here took you back, but I want to highlight just some Bye. very few things as we make mention to the fact that, of the fact that uh, it's been 25 years in government as a democratic government. It therefore tells us that like any other 25 year old, we have learned, we have made mistakes, but most importantly, we're growing up. And as we grow up, we take stock of what we did in the past and what we learned in order to shape our future. I come from a school of thought that says we're proud of our past, but confident of our future. The minister here, she said, this fourth industrial revolution gives you an opportunity to be the best that you can be and be better than Nelson Mandela. One of the days that we must be quoting those that did certain things for us, but here is an opportunity that's presented to us for us to give the next generation the story to tell, talking about the work that we are doing. As she went through the land reform issues, and as a person who had to come and talk about the foyer, I was like, I wonder if we ever think about all this that she was talking about and put it into context that can, there can never be any foyer or meaningful foyer without making sure that that land has the infrastructure by the right people. As the department and government is taking too long to address the challenges in land reform, other people are seeing an opportunity already. They're getting into the townships now. They're rolling out broadband. They're putting Wi-Fi. They've moved from the suburbs. They're making lots of money, but they realize the next big market. And we are seated, happy to enjoy the hot, the, those free hotspots. And we don't know who owns the infrastructure, including the server, forgetting that the most crucial thing, okay, the biggest currency in the fourth industrial revolution is data. Therefore, it matters who has access to our data because they will be using it for economic spin-offs. And we will get the land and everything in it will be belonging to other people. If we do not fast track the revolution to make sure that people get their land, but most importantly, if we do not wait for government to give us that land, to start now, to say, to say, we're not going to allow any Chinese company that's going to come to our township and roll out broadband. This fiber that we're going to put here, it has been put by black people and owned by them. See all of you first. And BBI, I saw you. Santa, uh, Sita. How would we make sure that as government, as we, we deploy this infrastructure, put certain amounts aside, we also take that into consideration, that we want to contribute towards the economic freedom of our people, and it has to start by infrastructure. We can say as government, yes, we're getting all the unconnected connected, as we're getting, rem re as we're getting them ready for the foyer, but if that is not in our hands, 
we're renting infrastructure from our people that will dictate the terms. We would have produced the best technologies for 4IR, and those technologies will be requiring that connectivity that we don't own. And therefore, the prices will go higher and higher, and it will be difficult for us in business to make business or profit because that infrastructure will be here, like those lease agreements and rentals that you pay to those big offices that you are occupying. It's just my part on the land reform and the 4IR. First things first, understanding our game and our space. We cannot wait for government to give us land, but we've got to fight now and block that. By the time government gives us, it will be us that are owning that infrastructure. <laughs> when President Ramaphosa made the announcement of the appointment of the current minister, responsible for communications and telecommunications. He mentioned three things that stuck on my heart. He spoke about transformation, he spoke about renewal, and he spoke about leading for IR. One thing, my dear brothers and sisters, that the 4IR focuses on is coordination. It forces people to work together, hence we talk of the machine to machine learning, that all of a sudden we begin to see this device being able to do this and that as we talk about Internet of Things. Okay. As I'm talking about that, I'm remembering what transpired in the house where a question was asked. What is this fourth industrial revolution? And I realized that in most cases we have assumed that because people talk about it, people know it. which therefore throws big challenge to ourselves. Because we might be talking about it as a slogan. It can be if we are to make sure that we build and drive it, we've got to make sure that we understand what we're talking about. I'm, rem I'm reminded by the fact that I spoke of IOTs, that I would assume that people know Internet of Things, Mzwane. And most people tend to think that the 4IR is still coming, 4IR is fourth industrial revolution, is still coming whilst they are leaving it. I always make a typical example that when you get in your car trying to locate a restaurant that I said we must meet at, and I send you the address or a WhatsApp location, you put it in your GPS if I didn't send WhatsApp location. Who do you think is the person that is, is communicating that, that giving you all the directions and all that? And you still think, I, the FOI are still coming. I, when they talk about the Internet of Things, it's things that are happening in America and China. But there in your car, you have GPS. You have Siri on your, on your cell phone, whom you ask questions and she responds to you. And that's the artificial intelligence that we're talking about. I don't want you to go to the complicated stuff, but the basic things that you use every day. You get into your living room, you switch on your decoder, automatically it gives whatever information it makes you to choose whatever program that you want. Who's programming it for you? But most importantly, as you log in or switch it on, who is this person that is watching you? Because you're reporting to somebody that I came at home and I, had, I went to my living room, including your alarm system, switch it off. Deactivate, activate, alerting somebody that now I'm home, the person that is driving your alarm system. And these things, in most cases, we don't associate with a foyer. We think it's things that are going there, no, because security, because whatever. But this is what we're talking about, the machine to machine learning, that I'm able to be able to watch what's happening in my house and instead of watching it on my tablet or cell phone. Well, somebody has put an app and whatever software that is there, and I'm able to log in and check what are they doing in my lunch? What are they doing in the other rooms? And I'm sitting in Pretoria, just going to the Eastern Cape, the home of the legends, a group of young uh, boys who come from Mount Frey, understanding that Eastern Cape is rural in its nature and it's very big on farming, but there's a challenge that their parents are, fail, are, are facing of stock theft. All they did, they said, they developed some software, they came up with a chip, 
that they put at the ear of, of, of the cow or cattle and you're able to trace it because the software links to your phone, you program it and you can see your cow wandering around including when it's weak because it's going to beep on your phone including when it doesn't produce more milk in terms of what it's supposed to produce that I know that this cow gives me 20 liters of milk every day but now you see good to hear what's happening because you see the state of the cow and all that is being done here these are things that are produced here in South Africa and we still think that the Chinese the Americans the Europeans will come and solve our problems because we do not understand our space we want people to bring big technologies for us to see that yes we are living in this era We've got to understand our space, the space that we're operating in, understand South Africa. Minister keeps on saying this revolution has to be South African in character. It can't be like the previous revolutions, the first, second, and the third, you know, the first with the steam engines, the emergence of the steam engines, with the second one, the introduction of the electricity, cell phones bridging that gap being able to call what, uh, what was it called? The first phone? Grandma, was it called? What was it called? Okay, I thought there were, there were old people here who remembered the first phone. Gram it was something, I forgot it. With the third one, the introduction of computers. And then this one. That is big on robotics and artificial intelligence that is big on nanotechnology, but most importantly, that gets to get these machines talking to each other. Now, threatening to replace the human factor if people have not done what they're supposed to do. And first things first, Minister, is to make sure that our people get the skills relevant for the foyer. Know that all don't have there are few people that we have, as I made examples of the innovations that have been produced here. But it forces us to get out of our comfort zone. It presents that disruption that at times helps us and at times it makes us so uncomfortable. And when you are comfortable with your environment, you don't want to tap out of it because this is how we've been doing this. You know, Labandwan, but your own minister. Yeah, okay, this one, they think they know it all. We've been around. And we're like, yes, we appreciate leadership. You know it all in the 20th century. We are here to help you get into the 21st century. And the knowledge that is required is that of the 21st century to the solution that we are facing. Therefore, that that we used to call for when we were young, we're still calling for it as young adults, that generational mix is very important. Taking into cognizance where we come from, like I said, learning from what we did, but most importantly, preparing for the future. And you can't prepare for the future if you don't see how it must look like. So it's very important that those generations work together. That's why we have big corporates who are still reluctant, Minister, to digital transform fully because the current status favors them. That is why you will see people in the banking sector taking offense with the emergence of the cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Everybody wants to fight. And people like, how do you encourage? No, they are scammers. No, they are gamblers. To me, that's innovation the person in the space. That's innovation, utilizing the technologies that are at our disposal, exploiting it to make economic benefits. All we have to do is to say, how do we then regulate if there's a net? But we've got to have a discussion. We can't say people must not be innovative because we're holding on to the past. This is how we do things. We can't fight Airbnb. We can't fight Uber because no, Abandu must go to the tax rank. No, all of us are talking for IR. You've got to live it. As I talk about that, 
One of the crucial things, again, related to what the minister spoke about, is to make sure that South Africa stops or reduces its level of being consumers to the Western and Asian and other countries' products. It is time for South Africa to rise and shine. But for South Africa to rise and shine, it has to speak with one voice. What is it that we want for South Africa in the fourth industrial revolution? Once we're able to say, this is where we want to see South Africa, we are able to identify what needs to be done. As we identify what needs to be done, we're able to say, as we look around the house or this room, that one can do this because we know he or she has expertise in that. That one can do that so that we can all reach that target that we want or meet the objectives that we have set for ourselves. But if we are not talking together, we will not achieve, it will not be successful. It requires us to reach out to each other as South Africans first, and then as Africa. Everybody appreciates the fact that Africa is the next big thing. We all agree, everybody, they see market in Africa. I mean, like, to do more, you would know, in the internet governance forum that we've been attending, nobody listened to Africa in terms of internet governance. It will be Europe and America. Today, at least we're able to find the Europeans saying, no, we recognize that Africa has the role to play because they want to come in here, but they have to speak our language for them to come here. Although they say they recognize that we have a role as Africa, they still have not given us a specific yes, role to play to allow us to be part of the people who set the standards of the internet so that as we participate in the game of internet we know how to play the game they want to determine the standards and how it is governed and we come and play just all like all of us are on twitter are on facebook are on this and that and when you say something they don't like they block you. No, they don't put you in trouble, those ones. They block you. And if, if it was here, we we're going to say, they're censoring us. But for how long are we going to be excited by those international platforms? And we take lots of money that as government deploys this free Wi-Fi, as government gives uh, these subsidies to certain companies and grants, so that we can make sure that there's ease of communication and therefore of doing business. And this money, all of it goes outside South Africa. As we talk of the big investments that the private companies were pleading or pledging, I think it was here, the investment summit, wherever it was, I can't remember. Pledges were made, how much remains here in South Africa of those monies? Because people come in and pledge 50 billion rands and only 5 billion is spent in South Africa. At what stage do we get to say, yes, we do want support because we have that money, but on these terms, and these terms must talk to the entire value chain, not just for you to look into BEE element, no. It was good when you introduced it, ministers, because you were introducing us to the business side, but we can't be BEE partners forever. We've got to own. We're tired of the podium. We want the state. For us to get the state, we've got to beat them in their own game. This is our space. Minister says the languages that we speak, they can never speak. They will just use Google to translate and hire you to translate for them. And therefore, even if they bring technologies, with their software, if they bring robots, they will not work for us if we can't communicate with them. But how do we make sure it's okay? For now, we don't have all the components to manufacture the devices. That's the reality of South Africa. But what is it that we have? That we make sure that as you bring this, but this one we have, you're not gonna mess up and bring it. 
We have seen them talking about skills that are not here in South Africa, bringing people there. And when you go to their factories, it's the same skills that people, our people have. We have had them, we have had them complaining about the quality of the work produced by black business until we sat down with them, the OEMs, to say, tell us, if you're talking about quality, what is it that you're complaining about exactly? So that we provide that necessary support to our black businesses for you to make sure that you contract them. They will take everybody, and as long as you are black. I found myself, again, once more, apologies if I'm controversial. I found myself asking one of the big conglomerates, saying that, no, look at the value chain, this is what we're doing, and everything he was quoting, none of those is from South Africa. I was like, that one is from Kenya, that one from Rwanda, my people have not benefited. And because they're ignorant to a point that Africa to them is one, so they don't care if South Africa did not benefit, they took somebody from Rwanda, what's your issue? So you're supposed to be happy, but they are making money here in South Africa. They are bringing their technologies here in South Africa. How do we as the black business make sure that we work together? I know at times in business I'm told you compete. But in my other life, I've seen white people not completing, but complimenting each other. I've seen them going to an extent just in a basic hotel issue. That if I'm fully booked, I transfer to her hotel whilst you're contracting me. <laughs> at what stage? Are we gonna do that? To make sure that this man, this man stays within ourselves. As I'm given an opportunity to subcontract by Vodacom, how do I make sure, yes, I don't have this. Why must I go there if this one has? Why don't I first check around the database of the people that we have, the expertise and the service that they are rendering, including the quality, because we always have to deal with them. They always talk of the quality. We, we, we had a, a living example with, um, BBI in KZN as we were rolling out uh, our broadband program. Contracted big people here and there, and then we went to KZN. Fortunately, we have a group that listens from our, our SMMEs in the ICT space. We told them, you have to work together, because if you're alone, you can't do it. You need lots of money to roll out infrastructure. If you do it alone, you're not good. So they worked together, and they got the tender from BBI. And trust me, in terms of quality, they are the best that we had. And we went to them, the big, the big guys, to say, you have been saying our people don't have capacity. You had issues with the quality. Just go to that area and see what those black incapacitated people have done. <laughs> but what assisted us as government, there was the fact that they were able to work together to say there is this thing, this part that we have. How do you make sure that I bring you as a person in finance, as a person who's doing that, and person that, and indeed they were able to go, including the legislation side. And they worked together and the, 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 the project was a success. Now we begin to say, this is our success story. We have to replicate it to other areas. I'm just talking on telecoms. As we move back to the 4IR, how do we make sure that our businesses as black people are able to digital transform fast so that we're able to go and say, yes, we're going to do these things. Because if your own organization has not undergone digital transformation, we will not be able to realize the economic spin-offs that we want to, 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 to realize. How do we make sure that we strengthen that solidarity that as black people have, that solidarity that has made it possible for us to achieve freedom when others did not think it's possible, in order for us to deliver economic freedom. We don't want it for our children, we want it for ourselves. Unlike those that delivered the political freedom, they didn't want it for them. They delivered it for us, we beneficiaries. Now what is it that we're gonna leave and make a difference? As we talk about land once more, people have to eat, even in the fourth industrial revolution. Food cannot be replaced. How do we tap into that potential of South Africa producing 
good food without us, Minister, being restricted. Because as much as the Chinese will say we produce less, but they have too much restrictions. At what stage do we sit down before we sign all these agreements? We look into what we have. Because we agree we sign all those trade agreements. We just agree they're going to supply this. And when they come to specification, they take us out of the game. How do we make sure that if we are signing with you, that will be supplying you drones to assist you in your whatever that you're doing, but the specification talks to what we have. I've seen a scenario in the Eastern Cape uh, by the Department of Education where they would advertise for school desks. And the specification of wood that they need is in Bumala. And me being me, I was like, why are you doing this? You're taking the people of the Eastern Cape away from this business. And you were talking 30%. I don't even know if 30% is enough. But it's okay, they're comfortable with it. Why do you take a specification? 100%, I'm not saying you're mixing it. Whilst you have areas in Yugi, you have areas in Stateran that produce good wood, you can at least have a balance because we understand we're South Africans. But if, if you are to deliver economic freedom, it starts with local empowerment, local economic development, recognizing what you have here first before we say, come China, come everybody. As we understand this is what we have, you come and compliment us in what we don't have. And that that we have has to be championed by the black business to say this is the best. And therefore, if it's championed by the black business, it means DTI, economic development, and everybody else that is involved in the standards issues, they understand that too. Because at times I get a sense that they stay somewhere, these ones. they not really understanding the challenges that we're going through here in South Africa when they have some criteria and even for funding and I question this government. I question them. When you develop this criteria and you proudly tell us that you could not spend because this black business people could not meet your criteria, who is it for if it could not meet their criteria, if they could not meet your criteria? <laughs> At what stage do you engage with people to understand where they are and therefore as government we're supposed to create an enabling environment via policy, but we can't do it sitting in Pretoria. We've got to engage with the people that are doing it so that when we develop a policy, it talks to that that they are doing. Because as government, we contribute very minimal to the economic growth. It is the industry that, that drives economic growth. If when we make legislations, regulations, and policy, we don't take that into consideration, we will see what is happening in South Africa. Because we shift that from allowing the private sector and the industries to drive the economy. We develop policies, regulations and legislation that were inward looking. I am the minister responsible for communications and telecommunications in everything I want to do. It has to talk to post office, it has to talk to Centec, as if that's going to help grow the economy. We have seen with every cent that we're spending, we have not contributed much to economic growth as government. But it is the private sector that has managed to drive that. Now, if minister, our legislation do not appreciate that, we stop regulating and developing legislation for government. We do it for the country. That is why, as the department, we partnered with 4IRSA, the partnership between all private sector, academia, big companies, and government. The Digital Economy Summit that we will be hosting on the 11th and 12th of April, we want a dialogue to say, yes, you're busy telling us about connectivity here, but ESCOM has challenges here. What kind of energy mix do we need for us to thrive in the 4IR? What kind of transportation do we need for us to thrive? And like I said, it doesn't mean that government is going to produce transport. This is the work that must be driven by the black business if it is to take charge and fight for its space in this economy that we're, we're talking about. Be it in the agro sector, be it in the energy sector, in the automobile sector, all sectors are affected. All. 
And this is an opportunity that is being presented to us to come up with a frame. I, I, I saw the NDP, it was a great plan, my sister, but I still had my issues, me being me. I get I said I'm gonna be controversial. Me being me, I wasn't happy just about one thing, that there were no sector plans that were developed after the National Development Plan. And this is why we said, for this, for IR plan for South Africa, sectors have to come up with plans in response to the bigger plan. At that as this sector, this is our role. Therefore, government, your role is to go and make sure that you're creating an enabling environment for us as the different sectors. And then we'll be responsive. And we will see the economic spin-offs of the 4IR if we do it like that. That's my take. And everybody will be involved. It will not be a government plan. It will be everybody's plan. And everybody will have a role to, to play. We live in the era or in the age of information disorder. Most of you refer to it as fake news. Whilst we're talking the 4IR president, whilst we're trying to build this crop of black business people, there are others who are hell-bent in destroying the reputation of those black businesses. And you find ourselves swimming, swimming, not knowing how to get out of it. It becomes very crucial for us to understand the internet governance processes if you are to play the game. Because once your brand is damaged, by fake news, it's very difficult to recover. And you go to a judiciary that does not even understand the space, but unfortunately it has to be the one that presides over the case. And they don't understand when you say, but this that happened there, indeed my system was hacked, or it was not hacked, this is not my company brand, they've produced a video and everything. How do we protect our businesses from that? Because your brand, as I said, is what makes you. And therefore, people will associate with what they see. Now, if we can't fight against those information disorders, we're not going to be progressive and productive in this. Because the opportunity that is being presented by internet to us is the fact that we can do business beyond South Africa. We can do business with Africa. We can do business with the world because the game is online. You just tap into the software, you just do everything, get audiences or, or clients or whatever that we call them in other countries, as long as we know our story. But if you get somebody to tell a wrong story about you, those people will, will be reluctant. Even we say we take a group of people, businessmen, we're bringing them to divorce, we're bringing them to India, but if it's tainted and you had nothing to do, to recover from that, it will not assist us. So it's important that as we talk about the advantages, we also talk to the disadvantages, but what's important, how do we deal with the disadvantages? That the same black company will be sending an email to another small business person to say, we've given you this contract, give us so much, but you have not done that as the black company. And when it comes there, they are scammers, all of them. You see black people, that's all they know, corruption. By that time, it's fake news. This is something that we need to work together to make sure that we fight it. And I have been saying that there's a need for complete overhaul of legislations in our country, Minister. If we are to deliver on the foyer, it doesn't matter if you are justice, it doesn't matter who you are, but there's a need for complete overhaul for those legislations to appreciate the emergence of these technological advancements that we are seeing today. So that when finance or treasury takes decisions, they appreciate that your department must be able to, 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 to advertise on social media. They must not tell you, no, you have to go there. They don't have a tax clearance. It's okay, we're still working on how we make sure that they pay. But for now, they are there. And most of our people are there online. So we need to reach out to them. They must not be the ones that stifle that opportunity. But at the same time, as we talk about your, 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 your land reform, calling for people to go to ministers of the field, agriculture, we're saying people have to eat, we're still stuck. The drones are still not regulated or licensed. 
And this is what the FOIA talks about, the opportunities that we are saying they are there. And we have South Africans who are investing in those. But as government, our laws still belong to the past. They still res respond to the telecoms of the 20th century and 19th century, you know, when we took over after apartheid, we tweaked here and there, and they still stuck there. They're not responsive to the data-centric market that we are living in today with the FYR. And when we do that, because I know people will be uncomfortable, we need your voice, not for us as government, like I said, that gone are the days where the Minister of Communications and this Department and Telecommunications must focus inwardly. We used to be, we used to be an economic driven department. We contributed a lot from the sector. We dropped from 2008 up to now. We have not managed to recover, but we need to go and reclaim our space putting the department at the center of growing the economy. That's why we're talking about the reconfiguration of the department. How do we make sure that this department that is very crucial to the growth of the economy, be it for rural development, agriculture, and, 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 plays that central role to make sure that even if you are investors coming here, your job is easy, of course, having leveled the ground for our people. And like I said, the first thing is for us to have a dialogue. So an opportunity is presented in the Digital Economy Summit. I'm sure you've been invited. If you are not invited yet, uh, because Secretariat is, is, is um, that's you, Jay, uh, Forte, and, and, and is sponsored by Telcom. We will try to make a follow-up because we wanted to understand the people that have been invited already. Because like I said, we want everybody to be invited to be invited to say this is where we want to see South Africa going. President Ramaphosa has again appointed the 4IR Commission that will serve as an advisory body to the cabinet. Even there, my brothers and sisters, how we crafted it, we were clear about one thing. That's why we said let's go for public nominations so that we don't just get to appoint, appoint, appoint because we know you. Because there are those people that will do lots of work, but we don't know them and have expertise. And other people decided to not to nominate at all. Other people felt like we're trying to take away government power, putting it in the industry, and we had to explain why it's important. Because I said FOIR is not about government. It's about countries and societies at large. As Minister talks of, of Prof from WEF, Prof Schwab, a group of private companies coming together, identifying economic opportunities, setting up a platform like that, inviting politicians for networking and people pay to go and engage with, politi with politicians and show big companies that have managed to go there and then they come and say, this is what we have to do, the power of influence. Every president wants to go there. And I said to them, like, but why are we allowing, allowing them to dictate our agenda without even checking, as you were saying, we go there, we talk about this, the next thing we change, because the trends are these. Do those trends assist us as the black businesses in South Africa? Do they help us achieve what we want to achieve? I mean, for those that are able to go to, to, go to Davos, you can read about it. You don't have to go to Davos. Internet does that, brings the information. But what I'm trying to emphasize, if we organize ourselves, that also people can recognize that we are a force to reckon with, just like those Davos guys. And we have everything here at home. Government will come, including these African ministers and presidents, to come and sit here, wanting to engage with black businesses. And that would mean we would have clearly identified our own role in the FOIR and therefore getting to coordinate those that are in charge and power to respond to our agenda. It's a game that we can play. We've done that as, as South Africans. We never waited for government to do things for us. We did things and government changed and had to respond. That's why today we have political freedom. 
But now, because we are here, we're able to express our opinions, we're able to vote, we think we have arrived. We get tenders, we think life is about tenders. No, we can't reduce ourselves to that. Those ones that are coming offering grants and loans here, the World Banks and the friends, with their clear conditions, if you get this money, this is what you must do. It's because they've mastered the game. They do not wait for government. But government has a crucial role to play to make sure that you are sustainable, that you are assisted in that that you are doing, because no business just woke up and then became a big business without the support of government. Be it through incentives, be it through legislation and regulations, we have to appreciate that as South Africa. That's why, uh, if we have CFOs here, I don't know, we fight with them when they want the three quotations, and as they want the three quotations, they want the price to be whatever, including in your bidding. How do you want to compare a South African produced product that you have not even incentivized? You want to compare with a, a, a tablet that comes from Korea or China, and you say those ones are cheaper, at the expense of a locally produced product that you did not support. But you want to say the game is fair. What is fair in that? We've got to change how we do things. Because I was saying in most cases we talk about these leadership conscientization programs, but we leave those people that deal with procurement. And they have to understand the space that we're operating in. Otherwise, our South African business will never prosper. They will forever have to be given a tender year construction yendela, and then they must go to some board who has a plant because even there we're not big. And then as he has the plant, I don't have the money. I must go to the bank, as DM was saying, and hmm, they put everything, and then they reject your application. Because they understand what Chrome is about. Why would they give you money so that you can grow your big business idea and want to challenge them? I don't know if we understand this, but I know I've seen it with the black businesses mainly and us. That we take pride that I'm wearing a Gucci dress, carrying that handbag, driving that expensive car, as if you're contributing to the, economy, to the growth of the economy, was to sending money outside. And that's what we want to be known for. Would I give up? I give up. Yes, layer. What would kill you if you were to support these people that are here to make sure that they create jobs? What would kill us if we were to support people like we do with the societies, the burial societies? Grow them to being a bank, although they're going to frustrate us. But we just have everybody speaking on that to make noise so that we can have our own black owned banks and we run them properly. We don't also get naughty. And we can do it because every day it is us. White people don't invest in funerals. It is us that invest in funerals. It starts with us to say we are here, we have 50 members or 100 members of the BBC. Imali to let it circulate up good within ourselves. If you go to social media, especially on the Facebook platform, there's a, a, a group called Brown Fans. Do you know them? Yeah. How many? How many? Yes. You, you know they, the people that took a conscious decision. If man, economic transformation will be realized in this country, and therefore if I'm looking for a plumber, I go there. Brown sense, any brownie there that is doing this, and then if I don't get them, that's when you, you get upside and get people. I want my bed made and all that. I want everything. You start there because they understand. They understand the importance of spreading and spending on us to make a difference in a country. For as long as we get big business in government and we still take money to those people, we come and complain the economy has not changed. What's going to change it? I agree they're sitting at home, they're playing golf, taking kids to, to school, they're doing homework. We can't do it because we're working for them. We're going to go back to them. We want to use your hotel to host this event. We want to do this. Everything that we get to stand on, we then go to those that are black-owned. How, how do we expect this economy to transform? 
whilst we can't even support other Africans by making these suits. That you were. But no, I want boss. I want mang mang. Of course you afford, there's nothing wrong with that. But at what stage do you begin to say, okay, I'll spend my 40% there and 60% here at home so that the potholes can be fixed, the tax can go up, and therefore the economy can grow. As, as we complain about the challenges that we're facing, but let's also look into our contribution to it. That's why the Chinese will forever come, my sister, and say, hey, we're giving you 3,000, whatever, we're giving you this and that. Because they know you're going to use their device anyway when they give you that money. Their technology, the money's going back to them. You don't even have a software there. Just like now we're rolling NHI, but no software is from South Africa. At what stage do we begin to say, let's understand the space? Even if you're in agriculture, your business is in agriculture, even if it's in aviation, in East London and Port Elizabeth, where they assemble, Mercedes Benz, Ipuma, Ibuye is expensive. They can't even afford it, but they produced it. There's not even a single thing that is South African on it. At what stage do we say, at least we have software engineers here. That software that is in your car is going to be developed and produced here so that there will be a South African element in it. Basic thing, you tapping into what they've brought to us, but putting the South African character into it. But like I said, it requires us to understand the space. Again, as I made mention of the cryptocurrencies, an example of Bitcoin like that people are complaining. Why can't we, my sister? People, they get into stock files. Why is it an issue when they tap into that blockchain element? Why do the banks don't want that? Because they know we will tamper with their arrangement. Once you're able to clap here and say this is how we're going to drive our currency, we're determining it here on this Bitcoin level, if it's Bitcoin, and then we get to exchange it because there comes a time that we will have to force people, if the people of this country understand their power, because I can't do it alone. Force people that even that Bitcoin, they have to be allowed to go to the transact here. They can exchange it for whatever product that they want. They can be able to buy electricity with it here. We have to, because other countries are doing that. And we always want to be the last because we want to please the status quo. We don't want to tamper with the status quo. I said the fourth industrial revolution is bringing disruptions. And of course, people will be uncomfortable. But we want people to realize the economic spin-offs that can be achieved if we understand this game. banks driving a cryptocurrency there. Once they're comfortable, they're going to get into it. Once they will realize, we are being left out. But for now, they're making lots of money. They just don't want you because for now, it's coming with the black people. It's coming. We've got to use the power that we have if we want to change the economy. Otherwise, it's not going to change. We will die complaining. Unfortunately, we'll give back to our children that must inherit this. And we have not been spending time with them. Because every day we say we're going to work to make sure that you, uh, we build a proper future for you. We're lying to them whilst we're conforming to the standards that are being built by the system that does not favor us. You go to government, you say everything that must be done, but up to date, we have not transformed because the systems are not ours. Which is something that poses a challenge again to our bureaucrats. This Think of outsourcing even policy making. And you want to come and present, we must adopt it. You don't even understand it yourself. How do you think white people make business? They use the same PFMA, but they're making business every day. But when it's us, we can't. We've got to navigate. It's stifling us because we don't understand the system. So there comes a time where we need black professionals to rise up and take center stage like they did with the formation of the ANC to change things in a country, to say we know, because you've seen now the system, you've seen how it works, we bring changes. And like I said, we will not be popular when we do that. But there must be an effort, a concerted one, to say together with our black businesses and our professionals, we are forced, because we're a government that must listen to people, my sister. 
If we listen to people, we've got to see that we respond to their challenges. And therefore, if these are the solutions that are being produced, therefore we've got to implement the solutions. But if we're not united, we're not going to be able to do that. If we have the spirit of competition amongst ourselves, we're not going to be able. Because we agree here, they run that side, they get to be more beat. We're going to give you a hand, Tana Man. You know, Papa Esco, we've got a 15 billion one. And then they come, they sing a, a different tune. They now understand how the system works. They come in to explain. We can't be cheap like that. We can't be cheap like that. We must not allow our current conditions to determine our future. And that means we've got to challenge what is the end stand for what we believe in if we want to invest in the future for our children and ourselves. You can have that land, like I said. You can have that voting right. It's useless without economic power. And it's useless with you having to go and beg all the time that you must be fighting over tenders. When you go and look into some people who are giving grants and all that, and you're like, I want to see these people of yours. Who are they? You're trying to look for your black businesses. You find very few, very few, very few. And money is being spent on other things that, of course, they will create fewer jobs for now, my sister. And then they will introduce robotics and the incentives they would have enjoyed, nevertheless. But they know that government requires them to employ so many people. And of course, they will comply for now because they want access to the country. But we cannot give those incentives to our own. It can never be correct. But stop selling each other. Black business people, stop selling each other. If you believe in yourselves as black business, not as individuals, you need to work together to make government to change things so that even private sector or those investors, when they come here, like it happens in other countries, they know if you didn't do APC, you're not going to make it in South Africa. But if you're not united, because they come with you, they don't come alone. They come with you and you knock at our doors. Minister, we want to see you we're doing this and that. And I give you audience because this is my black brother. It's the first time I hear this initiative from a black person. When I come, they can't even explain. You just introduce yourselves. Hey, Mr. Mangmang is going to make the presentation. You can't reduce yourselves to that. I've seen it several times. That's why I'm raising it. I've seen it to an extent that President, I took one person that I believed after he had showed us hey, the first smartphone in South Africa. I even made for my president Zuma to read from a tablet, locally produced by a black person. I took it to Africa and all that. Until one day, because black people believe in knocking each other, until he was knocked by other black people, and this was their coming to introduce themselves again to me. As I go there, they show me this phone and this tablet, they tell me, of, no, it has been approved by ICAS. I had the black brother to make sure that ICAS, I went over Vodacom to say we're busy with schools connectivity here. You're not going to bring tablets from the other side. You're going to buy from this man. This is locally produced. I went there, my sister were telling me of what they've done. And I'm like, please, shut up. I have, where is Mang Mang? I have helped Mang Mang working with this when he came. They were, they were all looking at each other with a white man, of course, the master in the house. Oh, hey, what in here? Hey, tell, tell, tell her. Mom, no, Bamba was just our salesperson. Yes. And I call Bamba when I get out. When are we launching? I pretend as if I don't know. When are we launching? I look. No, Vodacom has not placed an order. Don't wait for them. Let's launch. They will come and place that order. The next thing, he sends a message. Don't interact with Mang Mang. Why must I not? Hey, these people are crooks. He never told me that the company is not his. Of course, I knew that he was working with white people, but he had said he's a majority shareholder, which is why I bought, brought everyone, DTI, EDD, brought SABC, let's do this to market our people, including involving our president. On a shame, people wanting quick money, using us to achieve their commissions. You can't be reduced to people who make commission. Please. It weakens our policies. We can't achieve what we want to achieve 
we can't see the transformation that we want to see because Abandu they are happy to buzz front. It can be. Struggle with your business, which is why we're calling upon that work together so that when we come, we're able to force. That's why we have said, President, this thing of us going to meet with people is just one department, it's not working. We bring DTI from my side, we bring economic development, we bring arts and culture, because as we talk of the 4AR, people are focusing on technology and, and just people, they're leaving the arts element and innovation part. We bring science and technology, you bring them all, so that when we talk to you, these are the all aspects that we are looking at in this particular field. And then when you go to agriculture, we bring the relevant ones. So that if you saying you have this particular program, problem, DTI, how do you solve that? EDD, where do you come in? And then we're able to work together to say, this is one government intervention that we have made. But as long as we work in silos, because she may give you an incentive, and you would have to use my platform, and my policies or regulations wouldn't be allowing you to use my platform. But if you work together in understanding what is that we want to achieve, therefore we're able to say, no, 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 this one will not work because of ABCD. Therefore, make sure that we address ABCD. And all that can be made possible when we communicate and when we are coordinated.